We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We've got a great episode this week. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell and be sure to like, comment, and share if you like this episode and we'll get into this week's sponsor and show. This week's episode is sponsored by CityVest. CityVest has quickly become the most popular and best way for doctors to invest in top-performing real estate, private equity funds that are usually reserved for institutional investors. This unique access to investing in these institutional funds is available for the first time ever through CityVest easy and secure online investment platform. CityVest does the hard work of conducting due diligence and vetting the investments. They even get a third-party due diligence report that is posted on their website. As a result of aggregating a several million dollar investment amount into their access funds, CityVest gains access to investing in the institutional investment and is able to negotiate better investment terms such as a 12% preferred return. You can check them out at cityvest.com or go to the link in the show notes below. Now on to the show. So welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. And I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as usual, we talk about the four different types of freedom, financial, time, location, emotional freedom. And I'm always trying to connect the audience with people on the cutting edge, doing out-of-the-box thinking, doing innovative things in finance, coaching, uh, personal development. So today we have Tracy the set. And uh, Tracy has a very uh, accomplished bio. She's an, on a mission to redefine the world's economic future by increasing the financial literacy of entrepreneurs, also known as financial fitness. And with over 20 years of experience in the financial services industry, Tracy helps entrepreneurs across all industries on and offline. She's the Chief Financial Fitness Trainer of the Set Financial Fitness Incorporated and educates and empowers entrepreneurs to take control of and live their financial lives with confidence. Uh, she was a former executive at TD Bank and she's worked with thousands of entrepreneurs to secure financing that they needed. This hands on experience, coupled with her formal financial education, an MBA, and CFA designation position Tracy uniquely to coach um, people all things about money. Uh, in addition, she's a professor at Centennial College School of Business, and she regularly leads speaking engagements to increase financial fitness awareness. She also gives back to the community and volunteers with Therapeutic Paws of Canada, United Way, and Junior Achievement of Central Ontario. So Tracy, what an awesome bio and welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, really a pleasure to be here, Christopher. Yeah, I know uh, we know we're backstage talking and uh, it was great to finally, you know, connect and, you know, get you on the show. Uh, so t I know we're going to talk a lot about like finances, uh, financial resiliency. So tell us all about your journey, how you got started and we'll go from there. Absolutely. So uh, as you said, uh, I am based in Canada. So I'm in Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Uh, but I actually grew up on the East Coast uh, in Nova Scotia. Um, so kind of on that eastern seaboard. And ever since I was a little kid, I've absolutely loved money. Um, we form our views around money when we're five to seven years of age. And when I was seven, I, uh, I wanted to go to the corner store every day. And so I, I went the first day of summer vacation um, to my mom and I asked her, could I have some money? And, and she gave me a quarter to go get <laughs> some, some treats at the store. And then I went back on Tuesday 
And she said, no, Tracy, you've had your money for the week. And uh, we, we have money, but not for that. So I, I was very determined to figure out a way to get back to that corner store every day. Uh, so with my, my friend, we brainstormed different ways to make money. Um, we would have little classes and lessons. We would get kids to come and, and pay to come to our, our lessons, whether it be tennis lessons or something else. We made a neighborhood newspaper. We had little yard sales or lemonade stands. We did pretty much everything. And so I realized at a really young age that money could help you do things and get things that you wanted. And so uh, my dad was a banker uh, as well. And, and so we had lots of money talks in my house and it was a very unemotional thing. Um, so fast forward, I was in my, my teens. I started um, a business uh, looking after people's homes, which was fun to, to bring in some extra money. I did babysitting like most kids. And I was involved with Junior Achievement, which helps you really understand the way companies work. And I was the top salesperson for a few years with some really bad products. Um, so I went on to business school and I thought, oh, I'll just um, do that. And then I'll, I'll go work in, in an organization. So I ended up in banking and I thought that would last just a couple of years. Fast forward, 15 years went by um, and it was such a great opportunity to see lots of different parts of Canada and work with so many great people, clients and colleagues alike. Uh, and then my my seat was taken away from the table, as does happen in big organizations. And, and so instead of going back to a role that was very similar in another financial institution, I decided to package up all the things that I liked um, to do. And, and one of them primarily being helping people understand money. Um, whether it be in their businesses or in their personal lives, because I know that that's really the key to um, becoming successful on your terms is when you've got your money mastered. And so to really uh, break things down into simple ways and, and help the most people that I could, I decided to make my business all around that financial fitness that you talked about. That's that's so awesome. And it's, what's interesting is that, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that um, like uh, like having a job doesn't really guarantee you security, but, uh, mm -hmm. and, and what's, what's fascinating is that, you know, a lot of people are very successful and then have really great jobs, but it's really, they still have to depend on that job. And you notice that early and then you, you know, found the way to leverage your talent and skill. And now you're in control of your own finances and your own destiny. So Absolutely. And I get to package up all the things I like to do because I really like helping others. I really liked breaking uh, complex things down into um, simple parts and, and making things easy to understand. And so now I get to do that all the time. So that's really fun. Yeah. You know, from your journey, what are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen entrepreneurs make when it comes to their to their finances? Uh, so the first one is not taking accountability for the financial side of the business. And most people are experts at whatever their business is in. Um, so for the physicians listening, you're, you're excellent at what you do. Um, but to, to totally delegate to either a bookkeeper or an accountant or to just bury your head in the sand and think that everything's going to work out, I usually see entrepreneurs fall into one of those two camps. And when you're running a business... Uh, it's perfectly normal that you wouldn't have had training. I know our school system in Canada does a really poor job. I, I think it's the same in the U.S. Of, of teaching personal finance, let alone teaching how to run a business from the financial side. Um, <laughs> so, so I want everybody to know it's okay if you don't know how to do it. Um, but you're hearing me say that you've got to be accountable. And that's the number one thing that I see is, is people either delegating or just hoping that it's it's all going to work out. So you got to take accountability. Um, the second one I see is kind of mingling all the business and the personal stuff together. And that can make a real mess of things. And then it's very hard to figure out. And so then you don't know, is my business not doing well? Is my personal life um, using too much uh, resources? And it, it makes it really messy. Um, so to try to keep those separate. And the third one I see um, is not getting access to credit soon enough. And so as soon as you start your, your business, I think it's really important to go out and establish either a small line of credit or overdraft. Um, certainly um, get a credit card in place for the business name and don't just do everything in your personal name. Start the clock on your credit history um, just uh, like you have on your, on your personal side, but start that clock when you start your business. What's interesting is, uh, you know, the school teaches us to, you know, just uh, you know, get a education degree and, mm -hmm. you know, get a job. And, um, that, that's still, you know, advice, you know, um, it was really pertinent in the industrial age. Um, still 
you know, there's still applicability in the information age, but now there's, we you know, we really need to teach like financial literacy, like, you know, things such as student loan debt and, um, you know, assets and liabilities and, you know, what are, what the difference between the two. And so, um, so I think that's some of the shortcomings of our education. For a lot of physicians, you know, uh, um, they, they're great at their patient care. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but, you know, a lot of their, their personal finances are, um, and, uh, they don't kind of understand and they're not very financially savvy. So for physicians, how, how do you understand your financial position, assess ongoing costs and profits and start making real money from the business? Yeah. And so it, it does require some further education. And so whether you take a course, whether you work with a financial coach like me, it's really number one, understanding the way um, financial statements work. That's really important. So most business owners know the profit and loss of the income statement that shows all of the revenue and expenses. Um, very few look at the balance sheet, which shows all of the things that you own of value in the company and then all of the people you owe money to. Um, but then the next key is to really understand cash flow. So when do you have to pay money out? When does money come into you? That timing that it happens is all of the magic. And so being able to start forecasting um, cash flow, because especially if you're building a brand new practice and, and you're just getting things going, it's going to take some time for you to get um, lots of patients in uh, and kind of word of mouth to spread. And so you might have a lot more expenses at the beginning before all that revenue starts coming in. So how are you going to bridge those timing differences? Um, and, and so understanding not only just the traditional accounting finance, but also the cash flow impact is really key. And it's um, it's kind of like building a house. I like to tell people, um, you want to start first step, you're going to keep building on, you're going to build up the bricks of the house. And, and so it's like building a really strong foundation. And it's not something you're going to learn overnight in one day. Um, it's going to be through repeated practice and routine, like learning a language. So you want to make sure that you've, you've got some time in your schedule built out to, to spend on the financial side of the business. Those are some great pointers. Um, and then, you, so you talked a little bit about how you help physicians, um, uh, you know, understand financial literacy. Tell us more about, you know, what you do and, and how, how you can help others. Absolutely. So I work with business owners in one of two ways, either kind of a one-on-one -on -one coaching program or, or two through a group uh, online live uh, program. Uh, in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, I start by doing an assessment of their historical financial performance and, and show them kind of what their statements are, what they mean, and compare them as well to industry benchmarks. Um, because certainly within um, practices in, in different specialties, there's different benchmarks on the financial side. They're all kind of in the same range, but some, some of them show up differently. And so we want to see first objectively, how does somebody who's looking at the business evaluate it? And then we really want to dive in and start working with the numbers. And I work with business owners um, to create a cash flow forecast. Uh, we talk through all of that money coming in and that money coming out, the timing that it's going to happen. Um, from there, we build out a dashboard so that you can monitor key performance indicators on the financial side, um, kind of like doing a diagnostic on the financials, uh, like a physician may be doing with someone's health, and so that you can watch those bright light metrics and make sure that things are trending the way you want. And if they're not, um, that you can actually take action pretty quickly. And then the, the third big piece of that is actually digging into pricing especially if you're doing uh, additional services where maybe things are not as regulated or you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, in the business owners that I work with, revenues are typically under $2 million. I work with people across all industries. Um, certainly have worked with a lot of healthcare providers. Um, and pricing is, is one of the issues that uh, people don't realize that they're not charging enough and they, they don't see the the correlation between the, the prices they charge and the low profitability. So we want to really get clear on that and, and then kind of wrap it all up and, and together. And so the one-on-one -on -one gives a great opportunity to actually uh, be inside their business and to answer any questions they have and to give uh, for me to share any rec recommendations that I have um, from my 20 plus years experience uh, working with business owners. I think uh, these days and age, um, you know, all physicians are high. Everybody should have like a mentor and a coach. And, um, you know, even the the top people in their fields, they all, all of them have mentors and coaches. So a lot of physicians don't understand like financial statements and um, mm -hmm. and uh, like when they're applying for like a business loan or line of credit, how do they discover what 
lenders actually care about. Yeah, that's really important. So firstly, you want to get comfortable with your own financial statements so that you understand them in your cash flow cycle so that you know and, and can run your business and, and design the strategy to hit all of your goals. Um, but then you certainly want to have a sense when you're going to apply for that credit, like I talked about, what they're going to be looking for. And so a lot of times, um, new physicians, they may be um, needing loans to do leaseholds and, and to get the new space that they're renting uh, or owning up to speed and, and have it all set up so it's ready for patients to come in. It could be actually buying a building. So that's another form of financing we typically see. Um, and then probably some kind of operating credit to bridge that those timing differences. And so if a lender is going to lend you money that you need to pay back kind of on a monthly payment, that might be for one of those uh, leasehold improvement loans to get the premises ready. It could be for a a mortgage uh, for the building they may be buying. Um, They're going to be looking to make sure um, if they've got historical results, could you historically um, make the payments to pay this loan back? They're going to be looking at how much of this business is financed with debt versus equity. And so certainly, as we know in our personal lives too, um, I don't believe debt is good or bad. It's all in how you use it. And debt can be used to help us uh, achieve our financial goals. But if we get too much debt, all of a sudden, we can't make those principal and interest payments. And so they're looking at that debt to equity level. They're also going to look at um, what's the what's the plan for the business? What's the strategy? And having confidence that the management knows how to manage their cash flow and that they're going to stay focused on what their goals are. Um, so lenders would be looking for probably a projected sales and expense forecast as well as a projected cash flow statement. Um, so it's always nice to have kind of a a bird's eye view into what they're thinking about so that when you go in and talk to them or you're you're doing it on the phone or online, um, you're able to convey what it is that that your practice is going to do and how you're going to be successful and why you're deserving of those funds um, using the same kind of language and metrics that they are looking at. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. There's a lot of um, details that I think a lot of um, uh, physicians and others listening to this podcast could, you know, go to you and benefit from your wisdom and advice. Cause you know, f- you know, learning how to read a financial statement is like learning how to read a book and yet to know what <laughs> to look for in your field. What do you see that most entrepreneurs doing right with their money uh, that they may not realize and give themselves credit for? Yeah. So I, I usually ask business owners, how long have you been in business once I meet them? And so if anyone's been in business over six months, because I I work with people who've been in business for one year, five years, 20 years, it's never too late to learn about the financial side. If they've been in business for more than uh, four or five months, I'll tell them that they know how to manage cash flow and and really applaud them and and ask them to give themselves a pat on the back. And they'll, they'll say to me, well, no, I don't know how to do that. Um, But the sheer fact that they are still in business, that they've been making it work, um, they may not be doing it efficiently, they may not use strategies that I would use or or talk about it in the same way, but the sheer fact that you've been able to keep your business running um, tells me that you do know how to manage cash flow. And so we can start from that strength and that positivity and build on that to, to go from there. And, and so if you are, you've are you been in business for a while, it might've been a struggle, um, but the mere fact that you are in business still uh, tells me that you know you know how to manage cash flow. So for everybody listening, uh, give yourselves a pat on the back because that's it's hard to do. Uh, can leave you with some sleepless nights, especially if you've got a team that you're trying to make sure you have payroll ready um, on time. And if you've got rent payments, um, there's some real obligations that come. Um, so being able to juggle all that and keep it going is is really a good accomplishment. Yeah, that's that's all. Awesome. Wow. And um, and lastly, in your field, what do you see like? entrepreneurs needing to be accountable for? Uh, So as I said, the financial side of the business. And so that's when you're developing your strategy, make sure you're incorporating financial goals as well, that you're spending time on a regular basis, reviewing your financial results and your planning for the future. It's not sufficient to just look at your historical financial statements when you do them with your accountant once a year. Um, Ideally, you're going to set some time aside uh, minimum once a month, but I think doing it weekly actually makes it a little bit easier. And I'm not talking about spending uh, hours and hours every week. Let's put aside a half an hour a week to spend on the financial side of our business and really take control of that. And when we have confidence there, we're going to see that kind of permeate through the business and through our life. 
when things are not going well financially, our health can be impacted mentally and physically. It impacts our relationships. It also can impact um, the way we deal with our clients and our patients. Because if we've got half of our mind focused on our money troubles, um, because we either don't know what's going on or we're really stressed, we're not going to be able to do the best job that we can do. And in in the case of helping people, we want to make sure we give them our 100% attention. So highly recommend stepping up that accountability and then carving out some dedicated time in your calendar. And, And remember, you don't need to do it alone. Uh, You certainly can work with a financial planner, an advisor, a coach, whoever is going to help you. And and oftentimes it's just to get things started and you're going to be able to maintain that. Um, For for other people, they may want to work with someone ongoing. So you're going to know what's the right way for you to be able to keep everything straight and for you to stay on top of it and be accountable. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, this was a, such a fantastic uh, episode. I think you have a lot of um, experience and knowledge in the financial services industry. Um, and you know, and you know a lot about like financial statements and kind of the uh, nuts and bolts. So I think uh, a lot of, to all the listeners out there listening to this, um, you know, be sure to check out Tracy uh, in all of her work and her material. So Tracy, how do people get in contact with you um, and, you know, get in touch with you? So I'd love to leave a gift for everybody because I've just talked about the importance of working on the financial side of your business regularly. Uh, So I have a money meeting agenda that you can use um, to help you with those meetings that you're doing, whether it's with yourself or with business partners that you may have. And so you can head over to cashcoach.biz and download that. uh, And that will help you get started. Your first meeting might even be just looking at that agenda. So cashcoach.biz to download that money meeting agenda. The best way to reach me is on LinkedIn. So Tracy has an E and Bissett has two S's, two T's. And I'm sure um, Christopher will put the, the links in the show notes. Yeah, yes. To all the um, We'll put all the links in the show notes. And um, so we really enjoyed our time having you on the podcast. Um, any uh, last minute words of wisdom, parting advice before we call it a day? Uh, to be kind to yourself. Financial fitness is a lifelong journey, just like physical fitness. And so we want to take small, imperfect actions every day. We want to be kind if we make mistakes and just stick with it. You're going to be your biggest champion of your business. And uh, you want the financial side to run really smoothly. And you're going to see that kind of harmony then uh, spread across your life. Um, so take one one action every day. Be kind if you make a misstep and uh, have some fun because uh, we're all learning. And I certainly ne- learn new things every single week. Um, So don't be worried that you don't know everything. Just be kind to yourself and and get started today. Yeah, such powerful words of advice in these times. So um, thanks so much. And we look forward to having you on the podcast as a future guest. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. What a fantastic show. I hope you enjoyed our very special guest. Just remember, as a shout out to our this week's sponsor, CityVest.com. CityVest gives you access to the best real estate private equity funds with enhanced investment terms, verified due diligence, and lower risk. You can check them out at CityVest.com or click on the link in the show notes below to hear about their upcoming investment offerings. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrislewmdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.